Today on Sports Page, our Coach's Corner features Mike Knipper, the Assistant Athletic Director in charge of Media Relations here at UCM. We'll also chat with Mules Head Baseball Coach Kyle Crooks. We'll take a look at a UCM sport you may not be familiar with and their growth on campus. And Jada Hill will show us what UCM's equipment staff is up to this time of year. All that and more, straight ahead on Sports Page. Hello everyone and welcome to Sports Page, your place for your news and UCM sports and around the MIAA. I'm your host, Reed Karsig. As the Mules baseball team gets underway on their new field, senior Tyler House looks to make his last year as a Mule one to remember. Marquise Jones met with Tyler to see what he had to say on his time here as a Mule. My name is uh, Tyler House. I'm a redshirt junior. Uh, my major is Crisis Disaster Management. In 2014, just playing one game at the University of Missouri, senior Tyler House transferred here to UCM. I had the pleasure to sit down with the left-handed pitcher and see what's it like playing baseball here at Central Missouri. Beginning of the season, it was a rocky start, uh, but now we're starting to come into our own. Uh, Hitters are putting up runs for me, and the rest of the pitchers and the pitching staff is starting to, uh, you know, attack the zone and throw strikes. General being a left-handed pitcher is more of an advantage, I feel like, because uh, hitters don't really see left-handed pitching. So, in terms of that, uh, I feel like it's more of an advantage, advantage for my part. Being at Mizzou, I wasn't able to play baseball, and you know, coming here, they had a good, you know, baseball program, and I like the coaches and the players and. It was just a nice feel. There are a lot of teammates that look up to House. And assistant coach Damian Stamberski loves the work ethic of House and is proud that he is a mule. Well, we're very blessed to have Tyler in terms of his uh, work ethic and talent that he, that he brings to our club. He, um, he's a very good athlete out of high school, went to an another university, and throughout the process, he's, he's been dinged up a few times with multiple knee injuries and back injuries. but. His work ethic and ability to, to bounce back, and we're, we've got a pretty good protocol in place for him to be able to do that is, is invaluable. He's, he's a very, very big part of what we do. Just the communication, I guess, between me and the coaches. Uh, whenever I have a question with something, I can come to. I know I can come to them, and they can, you know, have a pretty simple answer for me. If I'm having trouble with my uh, mechanics or trying to visualize what they are trying to do on the field for me, then I can always come to them and we have a nice communication. He's a wonderful person to, to deal with on a daily basis. I think a uh, great teammate, you know, the, the guys know that it's not all about him. He's more about the mules than he is about himself. And, and that's phenomenal, especially on a guy that's going to take the ball for you, you know, on Friday night, every weekend and very talented individual that doesn't get so much caught up in him as much as us winning. And, and that's huge. I usually don't say much, but you know, by by doing so, um, by my actions and what I do on the field and off the field, I feel like people seem to look up to me as a leader. Uh, but as far as having fun, uh, like I said earlier, you know, we joke around, play pranks on people a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, my, usually my game time, my uh, ritual before the game is, you know, I listen to music. Uh, and then uh, I listen to a motivational video before I go. A few times I would watch the movie, like before even coming down here, I would watch the movie 42 uh, just to get my mind right on things and to be thankful for what's in front of me. But then other than that, before the game, we all go to left field or wherever part of the field we're at and we all pray together. We would not be where we're at without uh, with Tyler, without Tyler, without the the rest of the upperclassmen leadership that we have in the staff. You know, the, there are some times where we're going through some struggles, but the one constant has been our pitching staff, and, and they do a really good job of demanding it from each other. So, very blessed to have a good group of kids that like to work at it. Reporting for Sports Page, I'm Marquise Jones. Tyler has some big goals this season, and it looks like his teammates are going to do all they can to help him. But Tyler isn't the only one with big goals this season. Hayden Holver had a chance to sit down with head baseball coach Kyle Crooks for this segment of Coach's Corner. Hello and welcome to this edition of Coach's Corner. I'm Hayden Holver and we're here with head Mules baseball coach 
Kyle Cooks. Kyle, thanks for joining us today. Sure, no problem, Hayden. Yeah, so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, you're in your second season as the Mules uh, head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your expectations for this season? I think this, the same expectations this year for every year. You know, successful season, compete uh, compete for you know the top spot in the conference, and and, and work our way to try to try to get into a regional. Oh yeah, awesome. Uh, you have a lot of veteran players on this year's roster, um, such as uh, Bennett Oliver, Derek Cornell, and Matt Milner. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your What are the benefits of all this experience on the team? Uh, I think experience uh, means that you know every team we go play against uh, and, and every situation that, that that we face is something that they have probably faced in the past, uh, in, in the recent past, and faced it here, uh, with the expectations that you just mentioned of being a mule baseball player. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's it's more familiar to them, and, and I think they can draw upon that experience and, and help them slow down the game, so to speak, and and, and perform better. Mm -hmm. um, are there? Would you say there are there any drawbacks to this experience, or? I, I don't I don't know I, I don't think I I don't think there's any drawback to experience I don't think there's any I don't think there's anything that that you know whether it was negative or positive in the past I think it can always be turned into a positive moving forward uh, and be learned from. Uh, and and again, negative or positive, you know, the great thing about having the experienced players is, is that I think they're able to, you know, leave a little bit of a legacy and help the younger ones along um, with their perspective. Uh, whether again, whether the, the experience previously was good or bad, um, the teaching moments there are invaluable for the young players that are coming up trying to do the same thing. And so when you have guys like Bennett um, and Matt and, and Jake Alexander and Derek Cornell that are willing to share their experiences as they're having them now. Uh, becomes really impactful for the young players and, and helps affect their future positively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you have experienced a lot of success in your pa past, and uh, congratulations on your induction into the Hutchinson uh, Community College Hall of Fame. By the way, that's awesome. Thank you very that much. I appreciate ago. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, how do you create and maintain a culture of consistent <coughs> su success? Uh, I, th I think um, you know we're working on it here, and it's been here. Uh, that that helps. Uh, so, you know, the coaches previous, he, previously, you know, the, the guy that I worked for, Tom Myers, and, and the coach previous to him, Darren Henderson, and previous to him, Brad Hill, and then previous to him, Dave Enhorn. There's, there's been a long line of, of good coaches that have had their own cultures, but very, very positive, good cultures, winning cultures. Um, and, and I think for us, you know, we try to build on that and, and maintain that and, and then do it in our own way. Um, and I think doing it in our own way as a coaching staff is communicating effectively to our players what our expectations are. Um, and you know it's a con continuing process, and it's a process that starts from you know far before day one when the players get here, and we try to continue to use the same language, the same verbiage, and, and be consistent with our actions uh, as coaches to, to create that atmosphere and that culture. Yeah. Just a personal question here: uh, What is your favorite moment as a uh, as a coach? The the first moment that comes to my mind is, is us playing Carney last year in the first round of the conference tournament. Uh, Dylan Hansen was hitting, Ben and Oliver was at first, and, and we executed a hit and run. Uh, and and uh, for a few reasons, the, the atmosphere was great. Uh, it was obviously a playoff atmosphere. The crowd was terrific. Um, we executed something that we work on every single day in a big moment, and, and the players that executed it um, were, were experienced guys that, that got the reward of, uh, of feeling, the, um, feeling the moment, getting the positives of the moment. Um, and, and so that, that sticks out of my head. That, that's a moment that I think will, you know, will, will be imprinted you know, in, in my brain for, for a long time. Uh, so what are your aspirations as a coach? Would you like to go, you know, move on to D1 or stay here or uh, professional level? No, I mean, the, this, is my, this is my place. This is where I want to be. This is my home. Um, there's, this is, there's so many things about University of Central Missouri that I love, uh, part of the reason why I came here. Um, and, and it starts from the very top, from, from President Ambrose and, and how, he, how he handles the school and what his – goals and visions are in the character, um, you know, right on down the line to, to Jerry Hughes and Kathy Anderson and the other people that, that are part of the administration. And, and there's plenty more, you know, the coaches here and, and everybody else. Um, and this is, you know, for all intents and purposes, for me, this is this is a dream job. This is this is the place to be. Um, and you know, for obvious reasons beyond that, there's this, there's, there's everything that, that's, that's available to us as, as coaches here that, that make this place uh, what I would, you know, consider the, the, the top of the mountain in terms of coaching. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, thank you for uh, joining us today. Sure. And uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank yeah, you very absolutely. much. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Hayden. Appreciate your time. 
Mules baseball seems to have their targets inside as they move forward this season. Maybe that new field will help them out. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have our news and notes with Marquise Jones. And we'll learn about one of our popular club sports teams here at the University of Central Missouri. We'll be right back. I choose red to blaze my own trail. <laughs> I choose red to be with students and faculty who make me feel at home. I wanted a university with a big picture perspective. That's why I chose red. <laughs> why do you choose red? Choose red. Choose red. Choose the University of Central Missouri. Choose red. Can I do that? Is that allowed? Who says we can't know how a Civil War soldier felt or what it's like to change the rules of the game? Ken Burns pioneered a new way to tell America's story. And only PBS gives filmmakers like him a place to push the boundaries of what TV can do. Give to this PBS station so stories like these are available now and for generations to come. Welcome back to the UCM Sports page. Let's take a moment to talk to Marquise Jones, who has news and notes from UCM and around the MIAA. Marquise? Thanks, Reed. Business is booming as always here in the MIAA. Central Missouri's Shelby Winkerman has collected some more hardware for her career here at UCM. She has been named to Division II Conference Commissioners Association All-Central Region Team. Winkerman led the Jeans in scoring this season at almost 20 points per game. She also had 49% from the floor and 40% from the three-point range. The senior from Ryland, Missouri scored her 1,000th career point this season and climbed all the way up to number 11 on the all-time scoring list here at UCM. Two Mules wrestlers have been recognized for their efforts in the classroom and on the mat. Alan Person and Nick Lovejoy have been named to the second team Division II All-Academic Wrestling Squad. Person is a redshirt freshman at 165 pounds. He finished the season at 17 and 19 and placed fourth at the MIAA Championships and sixth at Regionals. Person is majoring in mechanical engineering and holds a 4.0 GPA. Lovejoy finished the season at 18 and 15 and was third at the heavyweight at the MIAA Championships. He's a junior majoring in economics and holds a 3.94 GPA. Jenny's bowling dropped to one spot to number six in the latest na National 10 Pin Coaches Association poll. UCM's 56 and 32 on the season. The Jennings received 710 points in the poll. The University of Nebraska tallied 19 of 27 first place votes and 973 points to move into the top spot in the poll. That's it for the news and notes. All the Muse and Jenny spring sports teams will be in action over the next couple of weeks. You can log on to UCMathletics.com to check out schedules, stats, and news. Back to you, Reed. There's a sport on campus that you may not hear any news or notes about. Rugby. Both men's and women's have seen growth and success over the past years. Bryce Jones and Michael Frazier will tell you more. You may have been seeing more and more rugby here in the U.S., but it is also growing on campus. Sophomore Kyle Overlease and senior Cal Calfarelli are excited to see the growth. I mean, since I've been here, I played last uh, second semester last year. That's when I first started, and the team was rather small then, but we definitely have gotten a lot of people out this year. Uh, in terms of just the country, I think rugby's grown like very fast in a very short amount of time lately just because USA has got their own team <coughs> now, and uh, it's starting to get televise more yeah it's growing a ton I mean right now uh, USA they have they're starting to create professional rugby teams so like uh, I think Sacramento has one Arizona uh, yeah they're, they're actually making a rugby league so it's pretty cool I think so the spring season while not as formally competitive is still a host to many tournaments for the UCM rugby teams uh, so the way it works is for college is Fall season is the like the playoffs and the national championship like that that that's how you set up for that, and then spring season is just a lot of friendly games, tournaments, stuff like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, fall seasons for nationals and stuff like that. Season so far has been going pretty well. I haven't been around as much, so I haven't been able to play um, very much this season. But I mean, they won a midnight sevens tournament in Kansas City, and they played against Truman. They beat them, and they had a another little um, sevens tournament type thing this past weekend big tournament called Rugger Fest in St. Louis, I believe. That's the weekend of April 2nd and 3rd. Uh, and so that's going to be the, that's what we're training for right now, basically. Many think rugby is more prone to injuries due to the lack of pads. Eight-year rugby vet Cal Caffarelli disagrees. 
I don't think there's more injuries uh, because, I mean, we teach people how to tackle properly and not get injured. So, I mean, football, you're just trying to kill each other, hit each other as hard as you can. You're more tactical with your tackling in rugby. So, there's a lot less serious injuries. I mean, there, there's injuries in every sport, but, I mean, a lot less, I think. The team has already completed some of their goals for this semester, but they plan to build on even more success. Team goals definitely... Uh, win Rugger Fest. That's I think going to be one of the biggest. I know one of the team goals was to win Midnight Sevens, which they did. So they did a good job with that. Um, and as for that, I don't. I think we just want to grow in numbers. Keep an eye out for UCM Rugby in St. Louis at Rugger Fest. Reporting for Sports Page, I'm Bryce Jones. Looks like you have another sport to follow here on campus. Well, he may not talk much rugby. Here in the studio, we have Dr. Joe Moore to host today's segment of Central Side. What do you have for us today, Joe? Thanks, Reed. No rugby today, but Marquise is joining me on the set to talk some UCM athletics. And of course, we'll hit on Martin to the MIAA basketball tournament. Had a great time up there. Got to be a part of some of the broadcast crews. Of course, the Jennies went to the first round, didn't make it through that. Mules didn't make it up to Kansas City. What do they need to do after seeing the competition to get back up to Kansas City next year? Well, thank you for joining me on my show today. But uh, <laughs> I, I think the Jennies, they did what they could do this year. I just think that they just need to look towards their point guards. Shelby Winkman, she's leaving uh, next year. Ashley Jones, she probably won't be back either. So go get a big, big man, big woman. Go look for your point guard. You got Paige Redmond. She's coming back. You got Cindy Crockett coming back. They did a phenomenal job against Pittsburgh State, which I literally think Pittsburgh State might win the championship next year. It's a good chance. A lot of people returning. Besides, They're in the Elite Eight this year. Yeah, besides Gafford, and she's leaving next year, but they do have a good core, especially with her, uh, her locker. She's a very good uh, three-point shooter. But the Jennies, I think they're doing what they can do at this point, and I think they will make it to the finals against Pittsburgh State next year. The guy side, like I said, they need to look for a point guard. Demaya Cunningham, he's a stellar athlete. But they need somebody to run that floor. You know, they had key players go down, like Kyle Wolf. He went down and looked towards your big men. Uh, Jacob Lawrence, Marquise Lawrence, they did phenomenal at the end of the year. But I think that the Mules will get back into the tournament next year, and they will make a run. Yeah, we saw how tough the MIAA is this year, you know, in men's and women's basketball. The, the Jennies have a good season, make it to that first round. MI, the Mules don't make it in, as talented as their teams are. So uh, great competition, and that's what brings out the best in you. Switching gears to our spring sports, oh. Mules baseball, Jenny softball, they both started out a little bit rough, playing some really stiff competition. Both of them have the ball rolling right now, have won several games in a row, um, or several of their last games that they've, you know, they've come through and done a really nice job. Why do you think that is? What have they got well, turned around? Baseball finally got a chance to get on their new turf field, so I think that was very key for them. They started off the season 1-7, and seven, and then now they're on an 8-2 and two run right now, so I think that's very key for them to come home and being, get the support from the fans here, and like I say, breaking that new turf field. But I really think it's their pitching that's really helping Tyler House. He's doing a phenomenal job. You know, Ricky Rivera, he was supposed to be here with us today, but he, as a grad assistant, he's doing a phenomenal job with them as well. He's got to get up to Coach uh, Stambersky. He's doing a uh, great job. But I think the pitching rotations really help them with their wins. And they have a tough, tough competition this weekend against Nebraska Kearney, but I think they will pull off the win because it's at home and they haven't had a problem winning games here at home. Softball, they had a good start. Right now they're 13 and 13. Um, so, but I just just keep doing, I guess, look for your veteran leadership. I know they have a lot of freshmen on their squad right now, but look towards your key players like Jill Luke, uh, Lucas. She's somebody you have to look towards. Her. She's been here four years. She's a senior. Look towards them. Uh, their freshman, Emily King, she's, she's another uh, good player for them as well. But look for the veterans. That's all I can say for the softball team right now. Hey, you talk about pitching. The Mules pitching is finally coming around. Those first five games, they lost four of them by a run, and they were playing some nationally ranked opponents. Softball, on the other hand, lost all of their pitching. Mm -hmm. Has brand new pitching in this year, so it's going to take a little bit to get the feel for what their game is and how they play in the MIAA. And that's when so. you look towards your veteranship. When you lose a lot of key players, you got to look towards the people that's been here the longest. And I know they have a lot of freshmen on their team this year, but they do have people that came back. Yeah. So you have to look towards them. Yeah. And, of course, we're in March Madness. Yes, sir. Who do you have winning the title? Everybody here, I'm going with North Carolina. I'm saying that just a little shaky because some people hate one of my picks this year. I do have UConn being KU. KU is not in my Final Four. I have Villanova. I have, I'm going on Limer taking Texas A&M. That West region is really unpredictable. You have Oregon. You have Duke. You have Oklahoma and Texas A&M. But I think Texas A&M is the strongest to come out of there. Uh, I also got Michigan State. And then I have North Carolina. But I think it's going to be Texas A&M versus North Carolina in the championship game only because – 
Texas A&M has been playing great basketball lately, and I think they can actually beat Oklahoma. I wouldn't be surprised if Oklahoma does beat uh, Texas A&M, but I think Texas A&M can pull it out. And shout out to Tremaine because I did predict that West Virginia uh, would beat Oklahoma in the Big 12 tournament, and he's a little mad about a little mad about me about that one. Well, then Tremaine can get in here and he can defend his picks. <laughs> I had five brackets this year. All right, go to <laughs> JoeMule.blogspot.com. Blogged about it this week. <laughs> I don't get to watch much basketball during the season. I spent 15 years in college athletics, saw a lot of basketball then. We do a lot of broadcasting of basketball here. So when I get home, last thing I want to do is watch NCAA basketball. I'm sorry, but that's, that's the way it is. But come March Madness time, I really get fired up about it. So I picked five, five brackets this year. I got my first one, all the top seeds, making it all the way through. <laughs> KU's going to win the national championship. Oh, okay. Sorry. Got my Cinderella bracket, all of my lower seeds. Everybody's moving forward. Then I have my ABC bracket. The, the top team, alphabetically, they got to move forward. Arizona's taking that one. Sorry, UALR. I was hoping Arkansas Little Rock could they pull that one off. They just lost yesterday. They just lost. They're out. <laughs> I had the one I picked by my heart and rally for Ryan. I had, uh, had Austin P going on that one, but they, they lost yesterday. Still got Little Rock. So now, well, so now we're going to go with my random selections. Just threw the names in the hat each round and picked out a team. Go Yale. Oh, God. Oh Ivy League, <laughs> it's fitting. Ivy League school winning the scientific method bracket. We're going with Yale. All right. All right. Okay. I, I also got to say, uh, you got to watch out for uh, University of North Iowa. I mean, they did beat North Carolina this past year, and I got them going against Texas A&M. You got to watch out for them. There's, there are a lot of sleepers in this tournament, and I did call the Wichita uh, State game yesterday and the Providence game, and I got those right, so I'm pretty happy. Yeah, no proof that he called it. He just said it afterwards, but that's all right. Marquis, it's great to be with you today. Great job. Great, to be great with stuff you. all around. That's all the time we have for Central Side. When we come back, we'll learn about some unsung heroes in the UCM athletic department. We'll also talk to one of my good friends, Mike Knipper, about what it takes to work in college athletics. Don't go away. You're watching the UCM Sports Page on the UCM Media Network. I choose red for unlimited possibilities. I choose red because my family is less than an hour away, but I still get to be independent. I get to apply my classroom experience to my everyday life. That's why I chose red. Okay, that'll work. Why do you choose red? Choose red. Choose red. Choose the University of Central Missouri. Choose red. Kidding, that was a joke. What if television could take us back in time into the mind of a president? This is our summer, Mr. Great and into the soul of a rebel. I still got the world! What if we could know how it feels to shoot for the stars, to witness the terrors of combat, and know the heartache of those left at home? And why can't TV remember the heroes we honored, the music we danced to, the dreams we chased? The hope still lives, and the dream shall never die. No one tells our nation's story like PBS. Give to your PBS station and help bring America's story to life, now and for generations to come. While athletes and coaches tend to get the accolades when it comes to sports, there are many people who work hard behind the scenes. Jada Hill brings us a story about one such group of people, UCM's equipment staff. The UCM athletic program is welcoming back a familiar face with Pat Swoboda, the UCM alum, tells me just how he ended up back in Warrensburg. I was an intern with the St. Louis Rams and I did that for two years and ended up becoming part of their staff as an assistant equipment manager. He discusses what made him lean towards being an equipment manager. To be an equipment manager, I just, I had an internship with the Jacksonville Jaguars and after that I just kind of learned what all you could do and, and everything that, like how fun it was and every day even though the hours are long and from there I just decided that's what I wanted to do, so I stuck with it. Pat Swoboda told me about his busy schedule here at UCM. Here at UCM I would be called the head equip athletics equipment manager. Uh, it consists of primarily football duties, um, fitting equipment, doing practice field setup, arranging attire for travel, 
um, making sure they have all their pads, their shoes, their jerseys, all that stuff. Uh, and then I oversee the laundry for every sport on campus. So get to manage three student equipment managers and three laundry assistants who end up washing all the uniforms and practice gear for all the sports. He told me why he's the football player's go-to guy. A lot of times I'm their favorite guy because I get to give them new gloves and new cleats and that's what they like to see. Uh, but I can also be their least favorite guy because they think they can get gloves every day. So Boda went into detail about the most consuming parts of his job. Parts, I think, in the off-season, the most time-consuming part is just preparation for the, for the fall. When the guys are away is when we do a lot of, uh, we get a lot of our orders in, like the t-shirts and shorts and all the workout gear. Uh, so we have to prep it, we have to take it out to get it printed, we have to put their names in it, get it put in their lockers and all that. And then during the season, I would say laundry. Uh, it usually takes about four or five hours just to wash all the sports laundry every night. Pat Svoboda has big plans for the future of the UCM equipment staff. Just develop the equipment program more. Uh, right now it's just a, a one full-time guy and three students. I think we can move it from there. We can move to a GA, develop the program, and really kind of just teach the students how to do things rather than just have them follow along. This is Jada Hill reporting for Sports Page. As a member of the equipment staff, I can say that we take pride in what we do and enjoy working with a great sports program here. In our final segment today, I had a chance to talk with a fellow behind the scenes member of the athletic world. Mike Knipper is the assistant athletic director and he is in charge of media relations. Some of his work may go unseen, but that's because it's supposed to be that way. All right, so I'm here with Mike Knipper. How you doing? Good. All right, um, you're the assistant athletic director and uh, media relations for UCM. Um, let's start off by just maybe telling us a typical day uh, in the life of Mike Knipper. Right now, since we're in the middle of basketball season, a typical day for me would be, uh, you know, I usually come in the morning about 8, 8.30, and I'm working right now. We have a game Wednesday night, so I'm working on game notes, uh, trying to get those ready, and those will go out to the local media and the conference media. Uh, game notes, it's basically statistics about our team, a little bit about the opponent that we're playing. Basically little tidbits here and there that the radio broadcasters or webcast announcers can use, they can throw in their broadcast. Um, and then we're getting other stuff ready for the game, which would be game programs, flip charts, things of that nature. You've uh, been here and received um, 10 uh, College Sports Information Directors of America publication awards um, and five best in the nation awards from that. Tell me uh, how proud that makes you maybe. I think the thing that I like the most about it is it's something that's judged by my peers. Uh, it's, it's something that's a publication contest through COSIDA which is our Sports Information Directors Association. Um, it means that the people who are doing your job all over the country view you, the publications that you're doing as something that's good, you know, that it looks good, it's got all the pertinent information and things of that nature. And it's something that every year, you know, we enter all of our media guides into the publication contest. Uh, some years we, we get a bunch of awards, some years we don't get as much, but it, it helps us to try to continually develop those, uh, to make them something that people will want to read and look at and something that when coaches go out recruiting, they can show it to a recruit and it's something that's going to catch their eye and something that, that they'll want to look at. And do you think maybe the success of the media guides and, and the awards you've received maybe comes with the great athletic tradition? It certainly doesn't hurt. Um, you know, having successful teams like we do across the board at Central Missouri, not only does it make our job easier, because it's a lot easier to write about teams that are winning uh, than teams that are, you know, perennial losers. Uh, you know, it makes that part of the job easier, but then we're able to do so many cool things. Um, you know, one of the comments I've gotten uh, about our baseball guide is we've got a, a page in there that's a full color page of all the different championship rings from all the regional championships when the Mules have made it to the World Series. Uh, and that's not something a lot of teams could do because they don't have the 16 regional championships that Mules baseball does. So that's one cool thing. You know, we've got pages in other media guides like men's and women's basketball with, you know, full color 
uh, pages of, of championship trophies from national championships and Final Four appearances. And I guess one last question. Um, maybe what's uh, your favorite perk about your job? Maybe uh, being the Nike gear or free admission, of course, since you work, or getting to travel with the teams, maybe you know, going to like a national championship or something. You know, obviously all the, all the Nike gear we get is, is a pretty good perk. Uh, but I would say, you know, some of the, the places I've been able to travel and the things I've been able to do uh, with this job. Um, you know, next week, we leave next Wednesday for Houston for a baseball tournament with the Mules baseball team where we go and we play at Minute Maid Park. Uh, and, you know, Jim Crane, who's a UCM alum, has just been, you know, so great to the baseball program here at Central Missouri that he hosts, now as the owner of the Astros, he hosts a tournament for us every year at his stadium. And we've got to do some pretty cool things. We got to go to a Houston Rockets game with him last year. And, I, I was fortunate enough to get to sit courtside with Jim. You know, I was like 10 feet away from Hakeem Olajuwon, who I grew up watching him play on TV. And there was, you know, a bunch of NFL players at the game. All these celebrities, people that, you know, you watch on TV uh, playing professional sports were sitting all around us. Um, you know, just being able to go to things like that. But I, you know, for me still the, the greatest memory that I've had in this job was two years ago when the Mules won the national championship for basketball. Um, it's the week we spent in Evansville, Indiana at the Elite Eight. It was more work than I've ever had to do in my entire life. I constantly had to have my cell phone plugged in because I was getting phone calls from media members, not only local people, um, but you know people from CBS who were broadcasting the games, wanting interviews, wanting information about coach and players and this and that. But I mean, it was so much work for that six or seven days we were in Evansville. But at the end of that game, you know, the the Mules winning the national championship, the celebration on the court. You know, like the celebration back, kind of the, the celebration that nobody else saw, like with Coach and some of the players and stuff, kind of back underneath, like in the locker room and things like that. Um, you know, those are memories that I'll never forget. Time out on the floor, Pittsburgh State, 30 seconds, time out. That's all we have for you today on Sports Page. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with our schedule, as well as other events. Hope you enjoyed our show today and remember to tune in next time when we spotlight senior Emily King as well as show you what it's like to be a member of the Spirit Squads here on campus. I'm Reed Karsig from all of us here. See you next time. I choose excitement. I choose to make a difference. I choose uncommon opportunities. I choose red to experience learning to a greater degree. Choose red. Choose the University of Central Missouri.